Welcome to Seven Pot Club. I'm Rob. I grow hot peppers. Another summer has come and gone. The days are getting shorter and soon Jack Frost frigid fingers will officially end outdoor pepper growing for the season. So it's time for my annual My Favorite Peppers episode where I taste seven of my favorite hot peppers of the summer. I'm out here on the deck on one of the last really warm days of the season. I thought I would class it up a little this year and wear a nice shirt and pour my beer into a glass. It's quiet out here at the moment, but I will warn you that the sound of airplanes, lawn equipment, and home construction could intrude at any time. These seven pods were picked fresh from the garden earlier today, and I look forward to tasting and describing them for you. And of course there's new music. Before the tasting commences, take a listen to this brief new song I wrote and recorded to commemorate this celebration of spice. Nothing big, nothing much. Just got to munch on a bunch of peppers for lunch. I've got a hunch with each crunch, some will singe, sting, and burn. Something I learned as a child when my vision blurred. I was nine, ate a pot, I was blind for an hour. I learned that the power of capsaicin can lift you up or do you in. You do well to respect it, because when you ingest it, some pain is expected. As thrills go, it's cheap, but my craving runs deep. I've got seven plus pods here, and as the moment draws near, I have little fear, because I'm used to the sear. Everyone knows that you reap what you sow and you are what you eat. Everyone knows that you reap what you sow and you are what you eat. I hope you liked that little ditty. My taste buds are tingling with anticipation. I always have a beer at hand to cleanse my palate between bites. This year, it's First Avenue Plus One Golden Ale from local Surly Brewing. First Avenue is the legendary Minneapolis nightclub that has served as the launching pad for artists like Prince, Lizzo, Soul Asylum, The Replacements, Semisonic, and so many others. The key to Plus One is balance and simplicity. Sounds like this beer will also be a perfect companion for tasting peppers. So let's get started. Number seven is the KS White Tie. I got these seeds directly from the creator, the one and only Kangstar. This looks a lot like some of the classic Thai varieties, but it has a more rounded tip. These are an ivory white at their earliest stage of development, then they turn purple, orange, and finally red when fully ripe. I have one white with some tinges of purple on it, and a red one here for comparison. Let's slice them open and take a look. Relatively thick walled, filled with seeds. Now here's the red one. Now that's rich, not fruity. It's got a nice bite to it. Crunchy, hot, not overpowering. Let's compare with the white. Less heat, less flavor. I would think if you really want to enjoy these, you should wait until they turn red. And as far as the red ones go, whoop, airplane. Gives me a chance to have a sip of beer. Mm, that is good. Dry and crisp. This is perfect for uh, 
enjoying peppers. I think this would be a great pepper for making chili crisp and is perfect for, I would think, any type of Asian food. So that's number seven, the uh, KS white tie. Now, number six, I already got some tiny hiccups going, so that was the mild one. So who knows what's gonna happen this year. Number six is the CGN 24360. These seeds are from Matt's Peppers. It's a capsicum chinense variety from Brazil. If you're wondering about the strange name, it's because it's part of the collection of plant seeds held by the Center for Genetic Resource in the Netherlands. All the info about CGN varieties can be found in their database. It's quite fascinating, and if there's interest, I might cover CGN in more depth in a future episode. Let me know in the comments. It's obviously very similar to Ahi Charapita, but a little smaller. I don't know if, how easy it would be to, uh, to slice one of these lengthwise, but let's give it a try. There are actually more seeds in here than you would think there would be. So I would guess that there's uh, probably at least six to eight seeds in the pod. I really like this. I really, really like this. It's, it's a little fruity and it's just the right size. One pepper is just the right amount to spice up one bite of food. And that's why I pop these by the handful during meals fresh all summer and uh, why I continue to use them in all sorts of stir fries, soups, stews, a uh, couple of noodles. Uh, taking them down to our local Vietnamese restaurant for to add to the pho, anything. I think these are great. This has now become one of my very, very favorites. And it probably would be number one, except number one is usually the hottest one that I eat each time. So anyway, that's CGN24360. Not much of a name, but what a pepper. And uh, let's move on to number five. Number five is Pimenta Diamar. It's another of the Brazilian Chinense varieties sent to me by Matt's Peppers. Some people classify these as an ornamental because of the toy top shape of the pods. But the plants are very prolific and they pack a moderate amount of heat and they are quite tasty. So medium thick walls. You can see some oil in there in the placenta. Let's give it a taste. I like that if the planes would just wait till I was chewing each time, then that would work out really good for me. You listening to me up there? This is really good. These do vary a little bit between pods. But I would say this is a little lower in heat than your average habanero or scotch bonnet. But it's so tasty. It's fruity, but not too fruity. It's just, it's one that I really, really like. I have been eating a whole lot of these. I think these would be great in making a, a, a sauce. Probably also be great for, for drying and uh, using as a powder to uh, flavor foods. And I really, really like it. Number five, Pimento Diamar. Number four is FP Fadas White F4. This is a really neat pepper. I got the seeds from Juanita de Jesus. It was developed at the Fadas farm in Italy and is a natural color variation from a cross of two ghosts. The photos I've seen of the pods show them as milk white, but most of mine have ripened to an ivory or cream color. This pod is one of the whitest. It's a very unique pepper. Let's slice it open. So it's, it's got pretty thick walls for a ghost pepper. And uh, I'll be honest with you, you know, this is my favorite because of the appearance and I've actually yet to taste one of these. So there's no better time to do so than right now. Let's go. Very mild for something that's bred from ghost peppers. 
I mean, I'm not saying it doesn't have a kick, but it's milder than I thought it would be, but very, very tasty. You know, I would class, just like the last one, I would classify this as something that's kind of an ornamental because of its unique coloration and shape, but is also a very tasty pepper. And uh, this is definitely one I am going to grow and I'm going to try to figure out the secret to making them pure white. Very interesting pepper. Definitely deserves to be one of my favorite peppers of 2021. Hot Paper Lantern is a chinense from Peru. I'm not sure if this can be classified as a habanero, but it, it's definitely in that heat range. It's early ripening, which is great for a northern climate like ours. It's also very prolific, and just a couple of pots will produce a whole lot of pots. Now, as you can see, this is fairly thin walled. So here we go. I really like these because you get some intense sweetness when you bite into them and then you wait a minute and then the heat starts kicking in. But it's, you know, it's haban habanero level heat, very manageable, very tasty. And this has really become, you know, my go-to habanero. And that's why it's one of my favorite peppers this year. Number two is Naga Smoky Rainbow. Now that's a name to reckon with. I saved these seeds from a pod sent me by my friend Smokey Joe. This is the clown prince of peppers with ripples, curves, and all sorts of loud and brash color combos finally ripening to red. There seems to be a wide range of heat with some pods almost mild while others are near super hot. <laughs> Just ask my friend John Sauer about that. Like FP Fadas White, I believe this is a cross of two ghosts. So I would expect a fair amount of heat. Let's investigate. Thin walled. This one, not sure whether I should be scared or not, but here we go. Let's see, super hot adjacent at least, maybe not super hot, but plenty hot. I'm feeling it in my ears. Some you, you get the fruit taste and then you get the heat. This one, I got the heat first and then I got the fruity taste afterwards. I'd like to grow this again. I hope I have some more seeds. We only have one left, the Trinidad Scorpion Maruga Green, seeds again from Samias La Palma. I'm fascinated by green ripening peppers, especially, you know, how do you know when they're ripe? I'm pretty sure but the bronze patina on this one means that this is the ripe state. I've eaten a couple of these in the unripe state. And for some reason, I have a problem deciding if they are blistering hot or just pretty hot. They have this kind of effervescence that makes them kind of like spicier, like eating pop rocks or something. And I couldn't tell how much of that was heat and how much of it was something else that inexplicable to me. Maybe this riper version will answer the question, but let's bisect it first. Okay, so it's thin walled. There's some oil in there, not a fairly large placenta, and I'm not really sure what to expect, but we're gonna, we're gonna go through this together. Here we go. Here we again, you know, tingly and lively. Really hot, but entertaining. I think, you know, this is the kind of pepper that I think you wanna bite into by itself rather than adding it to food because it's just such fun. It's like a party in your mouth. I'm so glad that I, I grew this one. Green ripening peppers are so very interesting. My number one pepper last year, the Gator Jigsaw, also a green ripening pepper. And if you know of any more, let me know in the comments. I really kind of want to explore this aspect of uh, super hot peppers. And those are my favorite seven hot peppers. 
See, I get you can tell it affected me because I can't keep my words straight. These are my seven favorite hot peppers for 2021. I hope you enjoyed the tasting. I hope you enjoyed the song. If you'd like to see more, you can help us grow by liking this video, subscribing to our channel, and tapping the bell to be notified when we post new episodes. Check out all our 7 Pot Club logo and hot pepper related apparel and other merch at 7pot.club slash merch. I've got a mouthful of saliva I have to swallow there. If you'd like a free 7 Pot Club membership card and stickers, get the details at 7pot.club slash card. And for even more 7 Pot Club, follow our daily exploits on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. For 7 Pot Club, I'm Rob. Mmm, tingly.